y equals sine x plus cos x, you will notice I've left off a lot of information off this graph. Even though I'm going to refer to it, I haven't put on any intercepts because this graph is about to get very busy very fast, okay? So let's have a look at the information we know and then go from there. So for instance, these graphs are sine and cosine. So I actually have an intimate knowledge of where these things pass through the axis, right? For instance, sine has intercepts at zero, 180 and 360. Cosine has intercepts at 90 and 270, and you can go on from there, okay? Now we're gonna use those pieces of information because when I add these two together, really what this means is, you know, each graph has its height. What are the combined heights of both graphs together? Example, here at the origin, right, or I should say x equals zero, right? The sine graph is equal to zero, but the cos graph is equal to one. So when I add up zero plus one, I get one. That's right? so on passing through that point. Right? There's a few other points that are just the same, right? For instance, cosine goes down here and it's zero because x is equal to zero. When x is equal to what angle? When x is equal to what angle? 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees there. And at the same point, because of this symmetry here, sine 90 is equal to 1. So I'm passing through there. There are a few other spots where I can see that, but in reverse, right? Here at 180 degrees in the middle, sine's equal to zero, but cosine is equal to minus one. So I'm down, down here. Okay. Um, let's see here. I've got sine. Uh, sorry, take that back. Cosine equal to zero. Sine equal to minus one. So one more point there. And last one, which we can take from an intercept, is right there at 360 degrees. Right. I'm back where I started. In fact, which is exactly what I should expect. Okay, so whatever my sum of these graphs are going to be, it's going to pass through all these blue points. Okay? But there's a few others I can put on there as well. For instance, the next most interesting point, points are the points of intersection. Right? You can see there are two of them. The first one's easy. What is this point of intersection? It's 45 degrees because sine of 45 and cos of 45 are both equal to... One, one, one on root two. Zero. One on root two. It's about 0 0.707, okay? Now, I don't need to know all that much about it, like one on root two, to know that here, they're both the same, right? So if I add two numbers that are both the same, it'll just be double, right? It'll be one on root two plus one on root two, which is two on root two. Hold on, what's two on root two? That's just root two, isn't it? Okay, so this is why I gave you, I asked you to do some extra space up here. Root two is about 1.4. Okay, so if you go up about 40%, that should be where the, the square root of 2 is, okay? And at x equals 45 degrees, I'm passing through there. Okay, now again, using the tremendous symmetry that you can see here, right? There's another point over here where I get exactly the same scenario with one subtle difference. I don't have 1 over 2, do I? I have minus 1 over 2. So when I add these two together, I'm going to get... Minus root 2, it's down here. Okay, now, this bit is a little bit tricky, okay? And um, let's see how you went. Pick up a ruler, okay? <coughs> and depending on how accurately you have drawn your graph, you should be able to find um, two points, two points, just like we just did two points there, where, for example, here's the first one, where the sine graph is above the axis the same distance that the cos graph is below the axis. Let me say that again. There's a point somewhere in here, right, where this positive distance, that's top to sine, is the same as this negative distance, right? So if you get a ruler, you ought to be able to sort of run it along here and be able to work out, ah, oh, it's about there. Okay, it should be about halfway, okay? So, where I've got a positive distance and a negative that are the same should cancel out, shouldn't they? I should get zero. Okay. 135, very good. It sh we should expect that because it's between 90 and 180. Okay. And because of this wonderful symmetry, I'm going to get exactly the same situation over here. Halfway between, what's that going to be? That's 270 and 360, so I guess it'll be 315? 315. Okay. This is enough. This is enough of a shape to actually connect this thing, right? Um, you can see I'm going to get this sort of up, down kind of shape, right? If you join the dots, do the best you can.
Well, use your imagination. There we go. It's pretty close. Okay. So what have I got here? Okay, this blue graph at last is y equals sine x plus cos x. Okay. Now that I've got that there, now I can put on the intercepts that I'm interested in, which we just mentioned, right? I think we said 135 degrees and 315. So those are the intercepts. Now, this is really great because now I can see the whole shape of it. And um, here's why I asked you to put an extra little space on the left-hand side, okay? What would happen over here? Okay, what would happen over here? And the answer is because the two things you put together, sine and cosine, are both periodic, 360 degrees, right? There's a copy every 360 degrees. So therefore, their sum, when you put them together, also ought to be a copy every 360 degrees, right? So in fact, what's happening over here is exactly the same as what's happening over here, right? Should be coming down kind of like this, okay? And it would continue, I suppose. So, what do we got here, right? In conclusion, how would you describe this blue shape that we've drawn? What words would you use to describe it? Looks kind of like a it's um it's periodic, right? It's periodic. Uh, I hope it's not a parabola because most of the parabolas I know are not periodic, right? Looks to me like it's just an overgrown sine curve, right? Like it's overgrown because look, I, I'm not between minus one and one anymore, am I? I I've sort of grown. I'm from minus root two to root two. I'm doing the same oscillating thing, right? So the first thing is the amplitude has been widened or or made taller. Okay, that's the amplitude. Um, that's vertically. It's also been sort of moved over, right? Because cos, it starts at its maximum. Whoops, sorry. Cos starts at its maximum and then comes down. Right? Sine starts at the middle. This blue graph starts neither at the middle or at the top, right? Um, it just kind of starts midway, right? So something's been moved over. This should really be the start, shouldn't it? Okay, but I've sort of shifted over a little bit. So that was our visual approach. What is this actual graph? Okay. Well, before we approach it algebraically, let me just conclude from all of this with a sentence. Right. Um, this is the sum of two trig functions. Right. Um, but sine and cosine are different from tan and cot and blah blah blah, and that they're also what we call wave functions. Wave functions, because amazingly, in the shape of a wave. Okay. So what I've got here, sine x plus cos x, is the sum of two wave functions. The sum of two wave functions. Okay? Oh my god, this is what you do in like in science when you have waves and you have to ah. Okay. So the sum of two wave functions is another wave function, right? Can you see? It's just another one, it's bigger, right? Is another wave function. But um, with two different qualities that we just pointed out. Vertically, it has a different amplitude, right? With a different amplitude. But also, it's been shifted horizontally, right? So what we call that is phase, right? Different amplitude and a different phase. Okay? So, we're going to find what this amplitude and phase are by tackling this with a surprising friend. So 